Welcome to the Know, I'm Meg Cherney. Here's your Tuesday Roundup. If you thought your wallets were safe for the summer, think again, and you should know better. A Steam summer sale info has leaked out of Valve. The next sale event will run from June 23rd through July 4th, just in time for us Americans to celebrate freedom. And of course, freedom from our money. And also RTX. This info comes from a confidential image from Valve, which is posted on Reddit by user Mr. Freeman BBQ, which is just so fitting with, you know, all the Valve and 4th of July talk. Mr. Freeman BBQ also leaked the start date and times of the autumn sale last fall, so hey, there's reason to believe this one's accurate. No word on what types of discounts we can expect this time around, but it doesn't really matter at this point, does it? Everybody already owns any game they could want, and then they buy 10 to 15 more that they're never gonna play. We all do it, we're guilty, and we can't help ourselves. America, and also the rest of the world. Anyone itching for a brand new Xbox Live gamer tag might be in luck. Finally, this week, Microsoft is releasing 1 million inactive gamer tags back into the wild. These gamer tags are from way back to the original Xbox, so you can just imagine the kinds of things people snatched up early on. According to Microsoft, some of these names are quite the catch, covering a variety of topics like proper names, pop culture references, and even some of the greatest inventions of all time. Whatever that means, apparently now you can be sliced bread on Xbox Live. Considering you can change your name once for free on the service, it does seem like there's a good opportunity here to ditch all those X's and capital X's and then lower X's again, uh, or ones or 1989's or whatever's at the end of your name. The very old gamer tags will be released in waves so as to give all our international friends an equal shot at nabbing one. You're welcome, rest of the world. The gamer tag Gold Rush begins tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. As new gamer tags are being reborn, another piece of the Xbox family is sadly going away. This weekend, news broke that Microsoft will be shutting down Project Spark, which was the game creation toolkit for Xbox that took E3 by storm the year it was announced. The shutdown was announced on Team Dakota's forum, stating that the game kit will no longer be available for download, and for all those who do use it, all services will be taken offline in August. Ouch. Fortunately, members of the team have already transitioned elsewhere in the company, so the whole studio isn't folding over it, but it is another blow for Microsoft here, who seem to have a first-party problem on their hands as of late. They've recently run into trouble with a number of their exclusive properties, including Fable and Gigantic, and now Project Spark, which really had a lot of promise, and then pretty much nothing after that. Um, but hey, at least it gave us some Conquer DLC before giving up the ghost. So. That's R.I.P. Did Pornhub get hacked over the weekend? Amazing transition. That seems to be the thousand dollar question here. On Saturday, one hacker claimed to have compromised the popular porn site, offering shell access and command line injection for a Pornhub subdomain to anyone who would pay him one thousand dollars. Low price point there. That would essentially give any bidder, or very low bidder, full control over one of Pornhub's subdomains. Now all this happened just days after Pornhub announced a private bug bounty program to find exploits just like this one. However, after the hacker sold the supposed exploit to a number of people, Pornhub stepped in, calling the whole thing a hoax, saying that the method he described for exploiting their system wasn't even technically possible. Uh, according to them, they contacted the hacker directly, who provided lots of conflicting information before leaving their chat session. Uh, apparently also, they couldn't figure out where his screenshot was coming from. It didn't look like anything they could possibly have produced. Yeah, great scam though. Don't worry, buddy. Happens to the best of us. At least you scam some people first. Yay. Pornhub may have had some ups and downs over the weekend and a lot of ups. And then it's a jock off joke, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't write it. But Civil War's second weekend was all up, kids. The superhero beat him up, another up there, soared for a second straight weekend in a row, bringing in another $150 million, which brings its total global box office to somewhere around 940 million bucks. The film will probably be hitting a billion in total earnings sometime this week, like yesterday or the day before. I don't know. And on pace to pass up Age of Ultron sometime in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, people tend to like it. And if you're wondering, that means that in two weeks, it's already beaten out this year's other versus flick, Batman v Superman, which totaled just under 900 million at the box office. You knew I was gonna make the comparison. Suck it, commenters. I really, it wasn't a terrible movie, it was bad. 
we'll move on. It'll be hard to replicate Marvel's success, but Ubisoft is certainly going to try with Assassin's Creed this holiday season, the film that is, I should clarify. And word has it, they're so sure the movie's success that they aren't just working on one sequel, as we previously reported, but two. This report comes from IGN, who visited the set of the film. Now, other new details about the movie dropped, including that we shouldn't expect to see anyone from the games, which is a huge bummer because Ezio's operating at the same time in Italy and we were hoping maybe they would just cross paths like, hey bro, and then that would be it, that would be great, apparently not. Plus, producer said we can only expect to be in the animus, listen up kids, for 35% of the movie. What the fuck? That means 65% focuses on activities in the present day, which nobody gives a shit about. That balance seems incredibly lopsided in my opinion, but yeah, well, I guess we'll see if it works. I do love Michael Fassbender. Assassin's Creed certainly has a fight in store for it when it hits theaters this December, just one week after a eh, maybe sort of famous movie you've heard of called Star Wars. So yeah, maybe not the best time to launch your new movie franchise, Ubisoft, but I'll look next time. Assassin's Creed may not focus too much on the historic past, but apparently that's not the case for Battlefield 1. The popular shooter franchise is returning to its roots with a new game set in World War I, and now someone on the internet has analyzed the game's new trailer to see just how historically accurate it's shaping up to be. This is a person after my very own heart. The Great War, a show entirely about World War I, did a special episode about Battlefield 1's trailer. I love you. In particular, they called out the armor featured in the trailer as ridiculous, as well as criticizing the game for the woman riding the horse into battle with a saber. At that time, the saber was an often ceremonial weapon. But all in all, they found the trailer to be largely accurate, and even congratulated DICE for picking up details that are largely forgotten about World War I. So, Maybe it means you could get like a history class credit for playing Battlefield 1? You're not gonna. Definitely don't watch the patch if you want to know anything about history, because, whew, I have, still have nightmares. And lastly, on to some feel-good news about hackers with hearts of gold. Oh, a nice flip from the Pornhub story. A group of white hat hackers known as Offensi was awarded 1 million air miles by United Airlines after finding an exploit on the company's website. Now, if you're wondering, that 1 million miles is valued somewhere around $20,000, at least as far as the IRS is concerned. However, rather than keep the miles, the hackers chose to donate them to a few charities. In total, they sent 500,000 miles to Ronald McDonald House, 250,000 to the Muscular Dystrophy Association, and the final 252 Casa de Esperanza de los Niños, which is the House of Hope for Children. So guys, some hackers try to lie about taking down Pornhub, but others send their rewards to charity. So good job, everyone. I'm not crying, you're crying. Uh, that does it for today's roundup. We'll hit you back, it was a real tone shift. We'll hit you back on Thursday with another big roundup. I actually got teary, so I'm not sure why the tone shift was so weird. Uh, let us know what you guys think about good guy hackers, porn hacks, and what people would find if they hacked Pornhub in the comments down below. For all the latest news from the world of geek, like this video and subscribe and to the no. <laughs> Had to screw it up at the end. Oh. Uh, Right. One million air miles by you, uh, so you can just imagine all the things kids where people, people.